Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you how to edit the SID and star altitudes, specifically crossing restrictions or crossing altitudes at different waypoints on different SIDs and stars. In order to do this, we're going to need SQLite. I'll give a link in the description. Once you've downloaded SQLite, we can open up the data that we want to mess with. In order to find that, it's Program Data, Flag Mountain, ATC Pro, Data. And we're going to open up Planning DB using SQLite. Once this is open, we want to find a waypoint that we want to edit. So we'll go back to ATC Pro. We've got Atlanta here. We're going to edit the Warrior 1 arrival. For an example, let's say we want to change the altitude at the Warrior waypoint. Now the bottom altitude of my airspace in that area is 11000. So let's change Warrior to 11000. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's one from before, so let's open the one that we were just in. Here we go. So, the database is open. We want to go to waypoints down at the bottom here. And just type in the waypoint. War, W-A-R-R-R, -R, because that's the one we want to change. Write down or memorize this number, 87262, the waypoint ID number. Go to terminal legs. A terminal is a procedure. So a SID, a star, or an approach. So we're going to go to terminal legs and under waypoint ID type that waypoint in 87262 <coughs> and this brings up the uh, all the terminals that use the waypoint and specifically that leg of that terminal so in this case there really is only one terminal one procedure that uses war uh, sorry warrior waypoint and that is uh, the warrior one arrival so we can just go over to the altitude here and change the altitudes to what we want. I've already done this for 11,000 so that's already in there but it's literally just double click type it in and hit the check mark up at the top <coughs> and that's it so you'll also see that some waypoints are used on more than one uh, procedure or the same procedure but for different runways so for all the runways it works for this waypoint to be at 11,000 feet um, but you can see how there are different runways here so based on which runway the aircraft is going to it's going to fly the leg um, uh, based on what's in here. So if, let's say, when they're on the, the Warrior 1 arrival for runway 09 or left, for example, uh, if we wanted them at a different altitude when they're on that runway, we could change that there. But again, in this case, all the all the runways, Warrior waypoint works at 11,000 feet. So let's try another example. Let's say we want to change, let's see, how about shirt? S-H-U-R-T. <coughs> Same thing. Go to waypoints. S-H-U-R-T. Write down or memorize the number, 26415. Waypoint ID, 26415. And again, in this case, for both runways, or sorry, for both the east and west landing runways, um, the altitude is the same, but in this case, I've made it 7,000. Right? But there will be cases where for some runways you want it at one altitude and others another altitude, which you can just sort the runways here by clicking transition. So let's say for all of the uh, landing east runways, um, we want them, say, at 9,000. So you can just sort that there and then easily see all of the um, columns or rows above this have to be in a certain altitude and go from there. So you can sort them. But again, in this case, the either runway, I like them down at 7,000. So. And you can do the same thing with the SIDs. Let's see, what's this guy on? Delta 981 is on the Braves 8. So Braves 8. So if I've got my guys crossing above on the war, Warrior 1 arrival, I keep wanting to say Wars because I've changed the way the arrival name to Wars. Let's say we've got guys on the Wars 1 arrival uh, descending to 1 1000. I want the aircraft departing that are on the Braves 8 or any of these arrivals that follow a similar path sorry, any of the departures that follow a similar, similar path, I want them to stop at 10,000. So what we could do is give rigs and or styles uh, 10,000 feet as an altitude, which I've done. So you can see Delta 981 is stopped at 10,000, and he'll stay at 10,000 until he's past styles, and then he'll start climbing, which keeps them out of the way of my guy descending on the Warrior 1 arrival. <coughs> it's done exactly the same way. Uh, just find the waypoint, type it in, go from there. So let's just see here. STYLZ, I think it was. So it's 87246. Terminal legs. 87246. 
And there we go. So yeah, I've made it 10,000 feet for all the runways. Because that waypoint is only used for um, airplanes that are departing to the west. Yeah, really handy tools. Made the program a lot more enjoyable. Um, just to be able to give descend via clearances, you can handle like 10 airplanes at once. And if you just give them descend vias, they'll do their own thing, follow the procedure all the way down to the downwind, and then they're ready for a base turn. They'll also slow down automatically on the arrival. Uh, one other thing I've done is I've deleted the um, the con the sorry, what am I trying to say? The supervisor or the instructor, that's what it is, deleted the instructor's voice. So if I mess up, I don't have to hear him squawking at me, but more importantly, when he squawks at me incorrectly, for example, often you'll be told that an airplane is out of your airspace when that's not true. That's just annoying and discouraging, so I've deleted him right out. Um, so I'll show you here what happens now. And there's another call that I've edited. I've changed the light turbulence reports to moderate turbulence reports because there's nothing more annoying than hearing about light turbulence when you're trying to give an aircraft vectors to final. So at least if they're calling moderate turbulence, well, that's a little bit more understandable to be to be reporting. So let's say I give Delta 1277 a descent below my airspace. So I'll give them a descent down to 10,000, and you'll only see a red cone, but I won't get squawked at. Delta 1277, descend 10,000. So, so you still get a red dot there, but... Uh, you don't hear about it from the instructor, which is a lot nicer. Once you know sort of what's going on and you don't need the feedback from the instructor, it's awesome to just be able to delete them. So in order to do that, we go to uh, Notepad++. I'll give a link for that in the description. Really great program as well. And I can't remember who it was on the forum that figured this out, but this was not me who figured it out. Uh, credit goes somewhere else. So in Notepad++, we will open up uh, here's the path here, program data, flag mount, and ATC Pro speech, and controller phraseology. Open that up. And way down at the bottom, <coughs> now I've already deleted all mine, but down at the bottom, all of these CICs, those are the instructor trying to squawk at you. So in the phraseology line, there would be something here, like MVA, it would say you just gave, and then, I don't know what it, can't remember how they do it, XXX, the descent below is MVA. So I'll just go out and just delete that. Don't delete the whole line, just delete what's between the phraseologies. Um, or you could even change, you can make them say whatever you want. I think one of the users changed it to just say, uh, like for MVA, it would just say MVA. It wouldn't be a whole sentence about what he did, it would just be MVA. So that's awesome. Um, another thing that I have edited, uh, save, uh, yeah sure. Uh, another thing that I've edited is the readbacks pilot phraseology, actually. So, I've changed it so they don't, yeah, they don't tell me about light turbulence. Mm. Yeah, so here we go. So, pyrep turb light. I've just changed the phrase the the wording to some moderate turbulence here. I can't delete it all together because if I deleted there like made it like that, um, then they just say their call sign but they don't say anything after it. So they're still trying to report it. So there needs to be something here. I don't know. So that's something that's a little bit less annoying. And light moderate. I guess I can add one there too. I think I just deleted that. Some big bumps. How about here? Yeah. Sure, good enough. Yeah, see how that works. Yeah, why not? Save. And then the other thing that I've also done is I got tired of saying warrior a million times an hour for the warrior one arrival. So, let's see if I can find it, but I've changed the name of the arrival. And that is under... no. Facilities pronunciation yes so facilities pronunciation just opens up a text document scroll down to the bottom I guess any of these waypoints whatever you want to do I've changed warrior just to wars that's easier to say easier for them to understand for the speech recognition and warrior one to wars one arrival just makes it nicer to say it works they understand it they read it back as wars one we just pretend that's what it's called and it works pretty well <coughs> 
So there's a few uh, little fixes or little tweaks I've made to the program that make it a lot more enjoyable. Overall, it's still an amazing program. Hopefully, these, or at least some of these, will be incorporated in the next update. But uh, in the meantime, the descend vias and climb vias actually working, having them all intertwined together, is a huge, huge improvement. I think, uh, at least from my experience. So there you go. Hopefully, this was helpful.